TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Man. Hi there, it's and welcome back to Coffee House. To grow the crown from me. <laughs> grow the crown. Grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. Don't forget if you just tuning in, parental uh, advisory is advised. You know, I don't glorify sensationalize or condone any of the acts or stories told. I'm here simply to educate myself and others in the history of the current state of issues around the world. Following the pre presentation is intended for mature audiences. Graphic it contains graphic descriptions of crime scene, adult dialogue, and strong language. Blah blah blah. Don't forget we are a partner with the Blueprint Mastermind, man. We do do the podcast. This link is down in the description if you want to check it out. Um, let's get to it, man. All my old videos on Facebook. Oh, right there. Boom. Anywho, how CCTV caught a killer. The case of Libby Squire and Powell Rolo. This is... <coughs> Excuse me. This is from um, Coffee House Crime. I'm going to subscribe. As you can see, and leave a like. Let's get into this, man. I don't think I've ever watched Coffee House Crime. Hi there, and welcome back to Coffee House Crime. Okay. My name is Adrian, and hey, today Adrian. we're looking at the case of Libby Squire who was tragically murdered in the early months of 2019. Now this story is all about being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm. Libby, she didn't know her killer, and he didn't know her. But surveillance footage did capture them both. So should we take a look at this then, you and I? This yes. is the case of Libby Squire. You, I, and us. We're gonna take a look at it. So March 3rd or February 2nd, 3rd? Libby Squire was a young woman who grew up in High Wycombe, Buckinghamshire. She's the oldest of four children raised by her mother Lisa and father Russ. She had a long-term boyfriend called Connor Pye, and the two had often talked about marriage and children in their future. Libby was described as a loving, down-to-earth student. She okay, so Libby lived a normal life. <laughs> Libby was a normal human being, one of the future, had plans. She was hardworking, nurturing and caring. Lisa, who nicknamed her daughter Pi, described her as a very sociable person who loved to go out and spend time with her friends. In September 2018, Libby returned to the University of Hull to continue her undergraduate's degree in philosophy. She chose the university after taking a liking to the city. City of Hull. Late in the evening of January the 31st, 2019, in the bitter cold city with snow and rain afoot, Libby and her friends were doing what students do best, partying. They was turning up! Okay. They were at home that evening, or at least to begin with, having pre-drinks before a big night out in the town. And after a drink or a few, the group headed out to a local nightclub called The Welly. The nightclub was popular among local students and adults. Club nights and gigs in a sumptuous ballroom, with an alternative dance floor above. Being a nightclub, the Welly had a duty to allow only happy punters in, and to refuse entry to those that were too drunk. And unfortunately for Libby, she had a few too many drinks that evening. Dang, Libby, you was too turned out to get in the club? Honestly, I've never seen in America anybody get denied for being too drunk. That's wild. She was refused entry. Now, a lot of us have been in that awkward moment before. What do you do? All go I'm lying. I've been refused entry. Yes, I have. They said I was too drunk, but I don't even think I had drank that night. I was like, okay. That, okay. This is what we on. <laughs> home together. Awkward moment before. What do you do? All go home together. Or carry on with the night and let the unlucky few head back home. In Chicago, we all go. We all go to the on next spot. We never, we never leave each other. On this occasion, it was the latter. The group planned to still carry on with their evening, but only after Libby got in a taxi to get home safely. And at 11.26pm, 
The taxi pulled up, and so they ushered Libby into the cab, waved their goodbyes, and headed on into the club. The nightclub hollered into the early hours of the morning. Music was blaring, drinks were flowing, and Libby's friends, they, they were enjoying themselves. Okay. One of Libby's friends, though, Amelia... It's a W narrator. I like this guy. Amelia. She... He has one of those monotone voices that never change. <laughs> she hadn't received a text from Libby to say that she'd got home safely. Amelia texted Erin, a mutual housemate of the two to ask if Libby had returned home. The answer was that she hadn't. No one knew where Libby went, she just seemed to vanish. When they returned home, they roamed the local area to see if she could be found, but no dice. Libby's friends were alarmed, it was very out of character for her to just disappear. So they called the police at 2.21am, and almost immediately, search efforts were underway. So in the UK, you don't gotta wait 48 hours for a missing person? Yeah, but only in the United States? That's weird, like, this, this is the right way to do it, immediately. Over 70 officers were assigned to Libby's case, and over 200 students also got involved in her search. Locals were asked to check their sheds and properties in case she'd looked for shelter that night. Drains and bins were searched, as was the rural woodland and farms nearby. Over the next few days, police scoured tips and local footage. Now, surveillance footage is a lot like putting together a puzzle. If one of y'all can't get in, if there's any college students watching this, anybody, if one of y'all can't get in, this is a group effort. You relocate or you all go home together. Never send one person. Bro. It takes time. It's an L friend group for me. Surveillance footage is a lot like putting together a puzzle. It takes time, but surely yet slowly, you're able to make sense of the picture. And what police were able to discover a couple days after her disappearance is that she did make it back home that evening. The taxi driver's dashcam footage confirmed that at 11.29pm that evening, she did make it to her front door. So a, a three minute taxi drive. 11.26 to 11.29, three minutes. And local witnesses also saw her but it seemed to them that maybe she wasn't in the mood to just sit at home and wait all night. A neighbour reported that two minutes later she left her front door, and CCTV soon confirmed that too. 11.31, okay, they caught her at 11.36 on CCTV. She was seen walking alone towards Beverly Road. Just after making it back to the main road at 11.39pm, Libby, probably through her drinks, fell over onto the pavement. A stroke of good luck though, Two locals passing by stopped to help her up off the pavement, and placed her on a bench next to the wall. But after 10 minutes, she had enough of them. So she asked them to be on their merry way. The two did, they carried on with their evening too. It was 10 minutes after this though, that Libby's night went from bad... To worse. ...to fatal. At 11.57pm, surveillance cameras captured a man walking past her on Beverly Road, crossing it towards Bearsford Avenue. Although it was difficult to distinguish who this person was, other surveillance cameras in the area were able to confirm it to be a man named Pavel Relevich. And at the same time of this discovery, Pavel, he was already becoming of interest to police for other reasons. So why wasn't he arrested on any charges? Pavel Relevich was a 24-year-old man living in the local area. He was Polish and grew up near Warsaw, before moving to the United Kingdom in 2012. Decided not to- Just a side question, what's up with this shirt? Like, it's the same shirt. To wear my red shirt for this one. From the outside, ah. Pavel seemed like a dead- Decided not to wear my red shirt for this- Ah, he made note of it, funny guy. This one. From the outside, Pavel seemed like a dedicated family man. He had a wife, two young children, and he held a job as a local butcher. He was a hard worker and enjoyed hitting the gym. I'm not gonna lie, man. I'm seeing all the signs. At 24, he had a wife and two kids? Bro was definitely bored. I'm just saying. Okay, continue. But the light of innocence on Pavel's face was very swiftly dwindling in Justice's eyes. Shortly after Libby's disappearance, 
Several witness reports and statements were coming in, accusing the man of various crimes in the area. And those accusations were indeed true. Over the following days, police gathered evidence of multiple offences conducted between December 2017 and January 2019. These charges included voyeurism, outraging public decency, and three counts of burglary. And it was voyeurism, outraging soon public decency. And two, that Pavel, he was targeting young female students living in the area. None of these, however, were related to Libby. Yet. Pavel Radovich was actually a sexual predator. Although students didn't know him at the time, or his name. On numerous occasions, Pavel was noticed staring at women through their bedroom windows while they undressed. He would break into students' bedrooms and stole sex toys and underwear. Further witnesses even recalled him performing sex acts on himself in the streets, with two girls traumatised after seeing him with his trousers around his ankles. And unfortunately for Libby, back on her fateful night of January the 31st, she unknowingly walked into his path. At 11.59, just two minutes after Pavel crosses Libby on the wall, she picks herself up and starts walking down Beverly Road. He doubled back. She can be seen moving from side to side on the pavement, and clearly vulnerable from alcohol, even stumble. Libby, just a question, How, what kind of, what was the pregame? Like, what? I had a whole bottle of Kettle One. ...falls onto the road at one point. 30 seconds later, as she continues to stumble down the road, Pavel leaves Bursford Avenue and begins to walk in the same direction as Libby, but on the opposite side of the road. And after another half minute, he crosses the road and intercepts her, the two disappearing into the grounds of a former nunnery. One minute later, Libby and Pavel are recorded emerging from the grounds together, and walking back up Beverly Road. And at 12.02am, one minute and nine seconds later, they reached the entrance to Hayworth Street, where they originally crossed paths. CCTV from a garage shows Pavel return to his car, which is just around a corner. He's seen sitting in the driver's seat with his feet outside the door. Where? And after a nearby vehicle leaves three minutes later, he stands up and walks back towards Beverly Road. Enhanced footage from a camera shows two figures walking across the end of the street, before appearing to stand together, then moving towards Pavel's car. And then back to the garage, surveillance footage captures Libby step into the passenger's side, before Pavel getting into the driver's seat. Pavel then drives off at 12.08am, and that footage would be the last time Libby is ever seen alive again. It's crazy, man. Following Never Grow. I'm telling you, it gotta be a group effort, man. Y'all got turned up together. Y'all gotta go home. They can't like when they when someone, somebody don't get the, get in. From data on Pavel's recent accusations, police were growing evidence to arrest him, and on February the seventh, two thousand and nineteen. Paul Radovich was arrested under potential abduction of Libby Squire. During this time, they seized his vehicle in an effort to look for any clues on Libby's whereabouts. And inside the car, police found a pink duffel bag containing two masks and sex toys stolen from students' homes across the city of Hull. On the 20th of March 2019, at around 3.30 in the afternoon, a body was found in the Humber estuary near Hull. Police transported the body to the coroner, who later confirmed the body belonged to that of Libby Squire. It had taken six weeks for her disappearance to come to an end. But why did he... Why did he take it to that level with her? He hadn't done that before, why would her? Local, national and international communities were in despair. Fresh agony hitting family and friends. Flowers were left on the bench where Libby was last seen on CCTV, a vigil for her was held at Hull's Minster, and tributes were left all over campus. Home Office pathologist Matthew Lyle declared Libby's cause of death to be unknown due to the amount of time that her body was oh, left okay. in the water, but he could not rule out asphyxia. It was also found that bruises were evident along Libby's abdomen, chest and thighs. 
Toxicology results revealed that no drugs were present in Libby's system, but her alcohol reading of 198 milligrams to 100 milliliters of blood meant that she was two and a half times over the legal drink drive. limit. I still don't get nobody to write, but like, I'm not even gonna lie, like, I know they, 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 that they friends have went through this all already, but like, just me, just me being present during the, as a friend during the pregame, just hypothetically speaking, and me and my friends was to do that, and I see, I know how much is being in, ingested I, I wouldn't have sent her home on her, on her own. That's just something we really don't do in Chicago anyway, though. But. Following the recovery of Libby's body, police were now officially able to look at the case as a suspected homicide. And with that ability, fresh investigations against Pavel Relevich were opened. By now, further evidence was beginning to mount up on Libby's final hours and Pavel Relevich's movements. One witness, whose home overlooks Oak Road playing fields, recalled being woken up by screams shortly after midnight on the night Libby was last seen. A couple minutes after waking up, he then heard the screams again. Through new surveillance footage found before the attack, it turns out that Pavel refueled his car at a local garage shortly after 9pm before checking the Oak Road playing fields. After noticing it was empty and quiet, he then began to roam the streets for easy, vulnerable women and that's when he came across Libby Squire. Libby was drunk, alone, upset, and vulnerable that evening. Unfortunately, through her drinking, and arguably through hypothermia too, she wasn't able to fully rationalize her thinking that night. Hypothermia. And just during that same time, Pavel, he was able to coerce her into his car, making multiple attempts, it seems, to do so. When she was in the car, he drove her, a couple streets away to the Oak Road playing fields, arriving at 12.11am. The screams heard from a nearby house at 12.14am are likely from Libby while he sexually assaulted her. As he did this, he supposedly choked her until she passed out. At 12.23am, Pavel fled the area. It's not known if at this stage Libby was dead, or if she was unconscious and succumbing to hypothermia. While she lay there, in the cold, all alone, Pavel went home and ran a hot bath for himself. He returned to Oak Road playing field about two hours later at 2.25 in the morning. He then picked up Libby's body and dumped her into the River Hull. This river eventually leads to the Humber, which is where Libby's body was found six weeks later. Do you think he stopped there though? No. No. At 2.51 of the same morning, Pavel Relevich was seen walking over Newlands Avenue and masturbating in the street. Seriously, what the fu- Pavel Relevich was formally charged with Libby's murder on the 24th of October 2019. His trial began one year and three months later in January 2000- Why it takes so long to begin? 21. The first week of trial, the jury were told of the sickening catalogue of sexually motivated crimes Pavel Rolovich had admitted. And on February the 11th, 2021, just one week ago, he was found guilty to the rape and murder of Libby Squire. He showed no emotion- Okay, how much time did he get? This is the real question now, how much time did he get? This is ...as the jury foreman read out the verdicts. Jurors found him guilty of rape unanimously, and guilty of murder by a majority verdict of 11 to 1. In court, his own barrister called his offences utterly disgusting. Pavel Relovich was sentenced to a minimum of 27 years in jail. He will become eligible for parole in 2048. Is that enough time? 27 years? Minimum 27, he was 25, 26. No, he need life without parole. And that's the case of Libby Squire and her murderer, Pavel Relovich. Although I've made many cases and even of a British victim before, this is the first one on British made many cases, and even of a British victim before, this is the first one on British ground. 
Even though all cases do, this one it, it hits a little bit harder being so close to home. And although it's different, I'm a guy, Libby was living a lifestyle I was living only a few years ago. Trying to imagine a friend of mine become lost to a crime as callous and ugly. I feel like we've all lived that lifestyle at one point, man. And, it's, it, it, and, and when you hear stories like this, it's like, dang. Like, I was really moving crazy because this could have easily been, you know, one of the homies or one of, you know, like you said, it's different for men, but, you know, I got girl, female friends, so it's like, man. Ugly is this one. I, I just can't imagine it, it just hurts. Libby Squire was a young girl just starting her independent life. And her parents, they even shared that she'd recently turned a new leaf from the hardships she had in her former years. She was flourishing in her studies and had made good new friends along the way. The entire reason she was out that night. But she ended up so vulnerable that night. And for some nasty piece of work to find her, take advantage of her, kill her and then dump her, it's angering. Following Pavel's crimes, his wife and two daughters abandoned him, Obviously. fleeing back to Poland to live another life. After he was sentenced, he wrote a letter to them. And in the letter he said, I wanted to ask how you are feeling. Do you still love me? I will never stop loving you. I want to come back so much. We have beautiful children and you are beautiful. I want you to be strong, love the children and love me. I will return to you, I promise you this. Hit yeah, somebody better go put her in protective custody, this dude, wow. He then asks her to transfer 70 pounds into his bank account so that he can watch TV in prison. Let's hope she never granted him that wish. May you rot in hell, Pavel. 27 years is not enough. It's not. Hi there, and thank you so much for watching another case of mine. Shout out to you, man. I like this, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Um, I like what he's doing over here. The story is actually bogus. It's sad, like, but...